All right, folks, so this week's golf course is Locust Hill Golf Course in Charlestown, West Virginia. This course was a kind of reaction, a, a compensation for the uh, Pimland, Primland course that I played the previous week down in Meadows of Dan, um, Virginia. Uh, Locust Hill is a about at most a two hour drive out of DC, number one. And that is less, it could be anywhere from an hour or so, depending on which side of, of DC you live on. It is up I-81 from I-66, about 20 miles north, about to Winchester, a little bit past Winchester, maybe 10 miles past Winchester north, and then you head east on I-9, I believe it is, to get to the course. Or sorry, uh, Route 9 to get to the course. And this is a road which essentially runs into Charlestown from the west. So if you are on the 340 corridor on the northeast side of Charlestown, the course is really not that hard to get to at all. It may be a half an hour if you're somewhere west of Frederick, maybe, maybe 45 minutes at the most. So it is a very convenient course to get to, not at all difficult to drive to, considering all the other options that people talk about some playing so much so often in the DC area. This course, I, did, I haven't really played a course in West Virginia in a while. It's been a, a, a few months, if not six months or so. I think the last time I played one in West Virginia was to play the woods just before the winter, which was you know, actually pretty surprisingly decent course uh, a very good layout and a nice neighborhood on top of that so i had um i guess in my ai database at golf now had uh similar courses pop up and they put this course up and i was like well this you know um now at this the problem is that after playing Pimlin, primlin I was a little bit more open to certainly a change of pace as a comparison. One of the things I'm trying to do is not play the same type of courses all the time. And while I do have a certain bias against neighborhood woods courses with a lot of houses and a lot of road noise and background noise, it doesn't mean that I'm completely against playing those courses. What I'm mostly against is playing crappy courses that are just not worth playing, like Enterprise, let's just say. Okay, I, I really... That is what I'm trying to avoid. Um, there are courses like, um, I could say, um, I think it's Montrose or something like that, uh, just off the um, Fairfax County Parkway, uh, which is literally just off uh, 95 uh, as you come like a mile or two up the um, Fairfax County Parkway, which are in really bad condition in some parts of the course but are still fun courses to play. They're in good areas of the county. This is a lot of road noise. We may have to cut this out. Um, they're in, they're the good power, part of Northern Virginia. They're easily accessible. The course may not be in the world's greatest condition. It is certainly surrounded by houses, but it's still a fun course to play. And I actually played it and enjoyed playing it. So this is, this is what I'm talking about. Truck noise. Why? Because Joe Redneck has to drive around in these giant freaking trucks with these giant tires. You know, why? All the time. Because that's who they are, you know. Um, and when you're playing on a golf course and these trucks are driving by and there are there's small planes flying over the course. Or there's some guy playing Sweet Home Alabama out of the back of his um, house. Full volume singing there, drinking a beer and sitting on, on a lawn chair in the back of, his, uh, back of his yard. And there's a golf course behind his house. That is highly distracting and annoying. But honestly, it all depends on how often it happens, how loud the trucks are, you know, how fast they're going and so forth. And I am on a side road, a side road, okay? It's in a, it's in a, a park, no question about it, but I'm on a side road. You can hear that these cars don't have to be all that loud for them to show up on the audio track of this, of this video. Imagine what it's like when you're when they drive by the tee box or by the green when you're trying to play golf. Well, this is something that people have to deal with because we can't always go running off in the middle of the woods in the Blue, Blue Ridge Mountains to play golf in a place 
where there are no cars going by the course and there are no planes flying overhead and no trucks driving by. And even in those cases, you were probably still going to hear at least one car drive by the course because to get to the course, you have to drive there. You're not going to take a horse to go to the course. You're not going to drop in by parachute. You're probably going to drive to the course. And so there will be at least one road by the course where there will be some traffic noise somewhere. That's just how it is. So we can't talk about the total absence of road noise, but we can talk about it being overwhelmed by road noise. We can't talk about the total absence of houses, but we can talk a bit about being overwhelmed by houses. So when I, sorry. So when I went to look at the um, satellite map for this course, which I always do, cause I always want to see how many houses are around the course before I you know, go out to play it. So I don't get my hopes up. I don't have false hopes or anything like that. One of the things I noticed was it had a lot of houses on the course. And, and this course does have quite a lot of houses on or near the course. I mean, it is literally in the middle of a fairly well-developed neighborhood. However, it is not a overdeveloped neighborhood. You don't see a lot of big houses up on hills looming over the course. You don't see a lot of houses near the tee boxes and greens, although there are some not a lot okay and it's not really all that bad as far as the, the houses and, and, and in an interesting way it's a good thing to keep you honest you know not have people slapping balls all over the all over the place trying to hit the, the hardest shot they can or some really tricky technical shot you, if you have some respect for houses for people in the houses the houses are far enough away off the fairway where you really you know it's it's actually occasionally you know, not a bad thing to have some respect for property off the golf course. So if there are houses off the golf course, you don't take silly, stupid shots or start throwing clubs and start, you know, shelling houses. That That's not an unreasonable thing, I think, for people to say. However, if you are playing in a house, on, I mean, sorry, a, a course with a lot of houses, it's also reasonable for people in the houses not to be cranking their stereos or talking loudly or, or, you know, having your kids run around the backyard screaming and yelling stuff while you're trying to play golf in a golf course in the middle of the neighborhood. So it's a, it's a balance. It's a hot balance that one has to just try to, to maintain. What I found is the, the one thing that's kind of a joker in all of this is lawn care. And you will find in a lot of courses that people tend to do lawn care during the day. Sometimes they start at 6.30, sometimes they start at 5 some in the afternoon. But generally speaking, it's rare that you will go out and play a golf course in the middle of a neighborhood that doesn't have anybody mowing their lawn, no one blowing leaves, no one sawing anything in their yard, no one running a truck or something with an old you know, two-stroke engine or something. The nicer the neighborhood is, the more likely you will find somebody running some mechanical uh, equipment and make a noise while you're trying to play. So, you know, and then of course, of course you'll have the occasional guy riding a motorcycle through the community making a lot of noise. So, um, what was I gonna say? I was driving to the course and I left my place at 10, 10 15 that morning and the course is I had a 12.30 tea time, let's put it this way. So here I am, I've got to drive out there and I'm thinking it's gonna take me literally an hour and a half to get to the course, right? I'll get there just before my tea time. I, I just said, you know, I have to get out of here by 10, I'll, I'll be there roughly on time to get to the course. And sure enough, I pulled out, I'm driving up the street, from my house and this asshole <laughs> comes up from behind and passes me in the slow lane with this damn Ram RT SUV that had absolutely sorry had absolutely no muffler on it no it had it had to have had a straight pipe it had to imagine a what a V6 or V8 you know, SUV, a big SUV with a V8 engine and a straight pipe. 
in the middle of uh, a two-lane road running through a residential area, a business, mixed business, whatever, but, you know, residential area with a straight pipe on a Saturday morning at 10.15 in the morning. I literally just stopped my car and let him just drive up the street. And I, I just, I said, I am not driving next to this car. I'm sorry. Okay. So eventually, you know, there we are right there. It's like Florida or something, you know, some kind of backwater part of Florida, Miami. So I eventually got away from this guy, drove up 95, um, got to um, 340, came down from Frederick and down into Charles, Charlestown. And um, I got to the course exactly at 1230. I was like, all right, my, I, my tea time is, I've already missed my tea time. and everything. I was all sweating and panicking and everything. I missed my tea time. So I stopped the car, get out of the car, and it's like this this large, I hate to say shack, but the clubhouse is this large shed, okay? Um, I was like, okay, you know, walk into the court, into the clubhouse. The guy's out there talking to somebody out in front of the clubhouse. He comes in, he sees me, he says, yes, can I help you? And I said, well, I have a tea time at uh, 1230. I said, I know I'm late, you know, I just, you know, um, but, you know, can you, can you get me out sometime today? And he looks at me and he hands me uh, a cart key and he says, you know, go ahead and take any one of the carts out there. Um, the first tee's right behind us. <laughs> he said, have a good time. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> because yes, it is a change of pace from a lot of courses that you could find yourself at, unfortunately at, where they will say to you, oh, you missed your tee time. We'll have to put you on the wait list, you know, or you missed your tea time. We'll see if we can get you out, you know, sometime in the next couple of hours, you know, and, and, and certainly, um, I'll have to ask to see if, you know, someone out there or who has a tea time already wouldn't mind if you played with them because we're under COVID and we don't want to force anyone to play with somebody else they don't want to play with under COVID, you know. No masks, no stress, no muss, no fuss. Handed me a key I, to start a cart, and I went out. And you know, after making a mistake of picking a cart that had already been used, I got out of the cart and went out to the first tee. Got out there. There's two guys already on the tee playing from the back tees, and we basically had a great time playing from the back tees. And of course, I mean, it wasn't as easy as I thought the course would be. I thought the course was going to be about a slope 130 based upon what I saw in golf now. And I kept playing the course and some of the holes were fairly straightforward, fairly simple. And some of them were a little tricky here and there. And, but mainly it wasn't really hard. It was more that the rough was tough to a certain degree. It was thick and thick and tough rough. I mean, there was no question. It was maybe three or four inches of rough at the most, but it was still thick enough, you know, where you didn't really want to play out of the rough, especially if you were on a short lie, you know, what you call a tight lie, whatever. Um, and especially having played Primlin the week before where the greens were just, you know, like an autobahn. You, you hit the ball on the green, you did not know where it was going to stop. If you put any real lateral velocity on it, it could stop, you know, within 10 feet. It could stop 30 feet on the other side of the, of, the, of the pin, it could stop on the fringe going down a hill. You didn't know. So I was really cautious to hit the ball on, on, on chip shots. It's a different story if you're 50 or 60 yards out and you're going to hit a, a, you know, a high pitch to the green. You pretty much take what happens, okay? Uh, but if you're pitching from the short side or you're pitching from near the green, you, you, you want to put a little bit more thought in that because you don't want, number one, to blade the ball. Number two, you don't want the ball going to roll way to hell off the green. So I pitch on the green and you know it took me maybe two or three holes to realize that the greens were slow on the slow side and that the uh rough was a challenge the other way in that it was hard to get on the green if you're really too careful but you have to be careful enough to get the ball up you can't go blading that ball under any conditions blading it around the green so um Long story short, short story, more interesting. That was pretty much a constant worry um, for all of us, all three of us, uh, because the greens were not necessarily level with the um, 
the uh, fairways, but they weren't necessarily elevated either. You know, some it, it the, usually the greens were more or less level with the fairway, but sometimes they did have some elevation. Sometimes it was a foot, sometimes it was two feet, five feet, sometimes 10 feet, sometimes 20 feet. And there were a couple of greens that were at least 30 feet over the fairway. There, there were, there was quite a variety of elevation considering that the ground around the clubhouse, the, the fairways and greens around the clubhouse were almost entirely flat. There were some parts of the course that were up on the side of a hill, up on the sides of a hill, but most, all right, now it gets windy. Most of the course was down below the hill where there were a number of different ponds and, and, and rivers and streams and stuff like that. So there was a, like three quarters of the course that was level with a lot of water and a quarter of the course that was slopey and hilly with a lot of elevation and a lot of trees. So it was a good mixed bag. And I, But part of me kept saying all along, I can't believe this is a 130 course. It's pretty tough for a 130 course. I can't believe this is a quite a 130 course. Sure enough, I get back home, I look it up on the NCSB National Course Database, and it is a 140 course from the back tees. It was a slope 140, solid 140 course from the back tees. And it did play at least 135, I would say, up in the 140s. I don't know if I would say 140, but um, or 140, but I definitely would would say this course was a 135 plus, a plausible 140 course from the back tee. Some of those holes, I won't say that they were hard, but I didn't play them all that well, and they were not that easy. There were, I, there, I can think of quite a few of the water shots. Um, some of the drives definitely on the front side. It was a good challenge. I wouldn't say it was hard. I wouldn't say it was really hard, but you, it definitely was a little bit harder than usual. And you have to think a little bit more than you're used to thinking when you play this course, because it does have that extra kind of lemon twist <laughs> in certain places on certain holes where you really kind of just want to take an extra couple of seconds and think about what you're doing before you go out there and treat it just like any other golf course that you've played a hundred times before or the hundreds of courses that you played before and go out there and take shots because I can guarantee you you're going to be surprised in, in some time, some ways. I think it was a good cross between a lot of neighborhoods with courses that I've played while at the same time it was not quite as nice of a course or quite as nice of a neighborhood as a lot of wood uh, neighborhoods wood courses that i played and as such it it does give you kind of a down home country feel and when you go out there and you're playing this course and you hear a lot of that you don't hear anybody playing you know modern rap music there uh at least i didn't I don't hear anyone um talking about um uh nonsense you know very upstanding neighborhood and the, the music that I did hear played around the course was all classic rock. I mean, uh, maybe some some country, you know, mixed in here and there, but definitely nothing like this woman who I uh, ran into the other day was driving around with an SUV and she, and she parked next to me in this, in this parking lot. And um, I gotta tell you, man, this, this really saddened me when it happened. This black woman was driving around. She got out of the, parked her car, uh, got out of the car. She had a kid who was eight years old, maybe in the front seat and a, and a toddler, like two or three years old in the back to both girls, you know, nicely dressed, uh, you know, nice clothing, everything, not, you know, some, you know, wrong side of the tracks family, but the music she was playing in that car was just, I couldn't believe it. Every other like every third word that was it was some rap song okay molly thumping bass not you know really but every third or fourth word that the song that the guy was singing was nigger that's exactly what i'm talking about i don't want to hear that when i go out to play golf the last thing i want to do is hear that when i'm out playing golf i hear it more than enough these kids driving around these guys these women driving around playing these stupid rap songs with saying nigger every 10 seconds. You know, I'm sure enough, a lot of people say, oh, you go out to West Virginia, you hear plenty of people call people niggers and all this kind of racism. 
Man, I swear to God, that was one of the nicest neighborhoods. I don't say it was the best neighborhood that I've ever been in, or it had the best houses or whatever, but that place was as homey as, as home gets. And I can't tell you that that course was a problem in any way for anyone of any color. Those people were just plain cool. It's the shit that happened in D.C. That's the problem. Okay? Not in, in that part of West Virginia. I'm, I'm not going to say I've never heard racist comment out in, in West Virginia. I'm not going to say I've never heard racist comments in Virginia. I'm going to say I'm definitely never going to say that I've never heard it in Maryland. But I didn't hear it there. Okay? It was a really nice place. So what are we going to say that was bad about this course? There are a number of spots in the course where there is a road right behind a tee box. And so I don't think it quite deserves a B plus for that reason. There's too many places on the course where cars are whizzing right behind you, you know, when you're trying to play the game. So I, I, a strong B, I would, I would definitely have to downrate this to. The condition of the course is good. The greens are a little bit shaggy, and there are some greens where the grass is too, needs to be cut. Basically, it's just too long. So I wouldn't say that it is in great condition. It's in, it's in good condition. It's in decent condition, but not great. The greens are definitely somewhat less in good condition than the fairways and the rough are. So not a bad course. And, and then overall, it is kind of a mundane looking course. There's some nice looking holes. There are some attractive holes, but there are also a lot of houses. And there are also some holes that are just pretty mundane. So a strong B, I'll give the course. It, it does have, and I do have, I can't really stress this too much, it is very close to D.C. relative to a lot of other public Slope 140 courses in the D.C. area that have the back tees open for the public to play from. A lot of courses will rate themselves as 140, 145, even 150 courses, but not have the back tees open. And it's really bad when a course is not even rated in the 140s from the back tees and the back tees are not open. There's a, The one thing you have to watch out for is courses overrating themselves and courses saying they have tees that they won't let you play from. This is not that course.